So we're here uh, in Burnaby, British Columbia, outside of Vancouver, and this is the end of a week where we've had a chance to look at the impact of tar sands here in Canada because we're concerned about what impact they will have on air pollution in refineries in the San Francisco Bay Area. And what you see off to the left is where a pipeline would end carrying tar sands from Alberta here to British Columbia onto tankers that would then go down the, the coast. And there's been amazing opposition here by the City of Vancouver, by British Columbia, by First Nations. And I'm here with 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 a leader of, of the First Nations, Councillor Charlene Alec, um, who has been leading a lot of the opposition here um, to the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Right. Tell me what it would mean to have a pipeline carrying tar sands from Alberta ending here in your community, what it would mean for your community here. It means that um, the risk that we're asked to bear is too much. Um, it's too much on our inlet, on the waters and everything that lives in it. And we're putting voice to the sea urchin, the seagrass, the salmon um, that uh, we have known to be our uh, sovereign food source um, as Indigenous right. people. Um, it puts too much risk on um, even these shores along yeah. here with the tanker traffic and the tugboat traffic um, and the foreshore erosion is just too much. As a member of state and regional air boards, I felt it was very important to visit the Canadian tar sands personally and learn. I had a chance to meet with stakeholders on all sides of this issue. The Alberta government, an oil company, environmental organizations, indigenous First Nation leaders, and the cities in the Vancouver area where the pipeline would end up. Whether or not Canadian tar sands make their way to refineries here in the Bay Area will have a major impact on the quality of the air we breathe and how we fight climate change. This is an important global issue. I hope you enjoy our video, which shares some of what I learned on this educational trip to Canada. Canada has the third largest oil reserves in the world. 97% of these reserves are tar sands, which lie beneath 55,000 square miles of land in the vast boreal forest of northern Alberta. These reserves hold up to 2 trillion barrels of recoverable oil with current production at about 2 million barrels a day. So what are tar sands? Also called oil sands, they are a mixture of sand, water, clay, and a type of heavy tar-like substance called bitumen. Extracting bitumen from tar sands and refining it into gasoline is much costlier, more difficult, and more energy intensive than extracting and refining liquid crude oil. A gallon of gasoline made from tar sands produces 15 to 20 percent more carbon dioxide emissions than one made from conventional oil. And for every gallon of gasoline produced by tar sands, nearly six gallons of water are consumed, roughly three times as much as conventional oil. Bitumen must be separated from the sand that it clings to. Once separated, it is too heavy and thick to flow on its own, so it must be diluted or heated into a more liquid form. This whole process takes tremendous amounts of energy. Tar sands deposits close to the surface are extracted through open pit mining. Giant shovels on heavy equipment scrape up the tarry sand and load it onto very large trucks which transport it to facilities for processing. Mining destroys the forest and requires two to four barrels of fresh water for every barrel of bitumen produced. Deposits deeper below the surface are extracted through drilling. Steam is injected deep into the ground to heat and liquefy the bitumen and separate it from the sand. Then it is pumped to the surface. A tremendous amount of natural gas is used to create the steam. Pipelines, surface wells, and tanks scar the landscape, disrupting wildlife and the natural environment. 
After extraction, the bitumen then goes to a nearby refinery-like facility where it is upgraded from a very heavy substance to a lighter oil so it can be transported by pipeline, rail, or ship to refineries where it's processed into products like gasoline and other fuels. Drilling, mining, diluting, transporting, and refining bitumen create harmful toxic emissions. Currently, most pipeline capacity to transport these tar sands goes to the U.S. Midwest and Texas. Very little pipeline capacity exists to transport it to ports on the west coast of Canada. That's why a 700-mile pipeline has been proposed to transport tar sands from Alberta to marine terminals near Vancouver. This new pipeline, proposed by Kinder Morgan, would triple the capacity of the existing pipeline from 300,000 to 890,000 barrels a day. There is substantial opposition to the pipeline. Indigenous First Nations, British Columbia, the cities of Vancouver and Burnaby, and environmental groups have all filed lawsuits to stop the pipeline's construction. I met with city and First Nations leaders and heard their concerns about the proposed pipeline. After Kinder Morgan recently backed out of its pipeline plans, the Canadian government agreed to buy the pipeline and continue the expansion efforts. So what does this proposed pipeline mean for us in the Bay Area? If the new pipeline gets built, it will be easier and cheaper to transport tar sands to Vancouver and from there by oil tankers to Bay Area refineries. Oil companies and the Alberta government have publicly stated that they want tar sands to reach a wider global market, including California and Asia. Cheaper tar sands available on the West Coast increases the likelihood that more of this heavy crude will be processed in Bay Area refineries and result in dirtier and unhealthy air emissions. In addition, opening up Canadian tar sands reserves to the large Pacific markets would greatly increase the worldwide supply of heavy crude, creating a disincentive to invest in clean renewable energy technology. This will have a devastating effect in our fight against global warming and be counterproductive to climate protection policies here in California. That's why environmental and indigenous groups in the Bay Area also oppose the processing of tar sands in local refineries. You can see there is a relationship between oil projects in Canada and the air we breathe here in the Bay Area. Here's how I feel. We need to think globally and act locally to prevent tar sands from coming to California. Thanks for watching this video.